A secret prison snitch convicted for lying to the jury in David Tamihiri's trial for murder can keep his name secret for now. The man known as Witness C has been convicted of perjury following a successful private prosecution by career criminal and serial litigant Arthur Taylor. He lost his name suppression as he was sentenced to eight and a half years in prison, but has appealed that decision to the Court of Appeal. Our court reporter Edward Gay was in court today and heard the arguments. He joins us from... Wellington now. Eddie, it's nice to have you with us, beaming in from the Wellington studio. Uh, Taylor says witness C should be named, right? That's right. And, and law his lawyer, Richard Francois, he was in court today. He said that people who violate the justice system shouldn't expect the same system to then protect them. And he said that's exactly what witness C is, is doing now. Witness C told Tamahiri's 1990 trial that uh, Tamahiri had made a number of confessions to him, uh, including that he'd sexually abused the Swedish tourists Heidi Parkinen and Sven Hoglund, and that he'd dumped their bodies at sea. Now, after the trial, Mr Hoglund's body was found in a shallow grave on the Coromandel Peninsula. Uh, Miss Parkinen has never been found, mm. but Witness C has recanted uh, his evidence after that, uh, since then, saying he had been put up to uh, that by the police, something the police have always denied, and indeed an investigation subsequently cleared the police of any wrongdoing. Right, Witness C, of course, is saying, uh, I should be allowed to keep my name secret. That's right, and, and his lawyer, one of his lawyers, Heather Vaughan, today said that her client actually planned to appeal his convictions for perjury. Uh, if that's successful, there'll be a retrial, but if he was named in the meantime, he might not get a fair trial, as potential jurors may have heard about uh, his history in the media. She said media coverage would likely be extensive because of her client's link to the Tamahiri trial, and there would also be coverage overseas given uh, the, the origin of the victims. She said it was also in the public interest to keep the identities of informants secret, as it might deter other informants from coming forward. Another lawyer for Witness C, Adam Simperingham, he confirmed to the court today that he told the trial judge in chambers that he couldn't see any possible grounds of appeal. However, Mr Simperingham went on to say that Witness C told him minutes later that he did want to appeal. Uh, Justice Asher, one of the three judges sitting today, said that uh, Miss Vaughan, uh, sorry, asked Miss Vaughan how her client could appeal, given he went on, he's been on the public record twice admitting he had lied to the jury. Miss Vaughan said she couldn't speculate, speculate on the appeal at this point. Yeah, this is the big point, isn't it? So, uh, Mr. Francois is saying, what, what, no chance of a appeal being successful? Oh, this is, it's, it's, it's uh, boy, there's uh, varying points of view on this, Eddie. There, there are, there are. And he said he had no respect for Witness C. He described him as someone who manipulates the justice system. Mr. Francois said if Witness C was named, any memory of the media coverage in the minds of uh, potential jurors would fade by the time the trial came to court. That, that would be at least a year away. And the judges have asked for a full transcript of the High Court sentencing notes and other files from the High Court file, and they've reserved their decision. Edward Gay, who was covering this uh, in Wellington today. Thanks so much, Eddie.